Hi, this is Tara McGillicuddy, host of ADHD Support Talk Radio. And we are less than two weeks away from the start of the 8th Annual Online ADHD Awareness Expo. It begins on October 1st and runs all the way through October 7th. You can learn more and sign up for the free virtual event at ADHDExpo.com. It does begin on October 1st, but if you register today, you will have immediate access to some surprise bonus items. That's ADHDExpo.com. So while I'm busy producing the ADHD Awareness Expo, I'm going to be rebroadcasting some of the favorite and popular episodes of ADHD Support Talk Radio. So today you're going to be listening to Distractibility in Relationships Affected by ADD and ADHD with Melissa Orlov. And be sure to stop by ADHDSupportTalk.com where you can find out more information, including links to Melissa Orlov's site. Thanks, everyone. Hello and welcome to ADHD Support Talk Radio. My name is Tara McGillicuddy and I am the host of ADHD Support Talk Radio. I am also an adult ADD and ADHD productivity coach and the founder and director of ADDclasses.com. And at ADDclasses.com, we provide virtual support and education to people affected by ADD and ADHD. We have three teleseminars. We have an extensive ADD audio library and we also offer more in-depth support programs. And you can learn more about ADDclasses.com by going to the website, www.addclasses.com. And with that, I would like to welcome back Melissa Orlov to ADHD Support Talk Radio. In just a moment, we're going to be talking about how distractibility can impact and affect relationships affected with ADD and ADHD. So welcome back, Melissa. Thanks so much. I'm happy to be talking to you, Tara. Okay, great. Before we get started talking about the topic, can you let our listeners know a bit about yourself and how they get in touch with you after today's show? I am a marriage consultant who specializes in working with couples impacted by ADHD. I've been doing this for quite a number of years now. And I have a website with a lot of information about ADHD and adult relationships. Um, You can find that at www.adhdmarriage.com. And I also give seminars a few times a year for couples impacted by ADHD. That's a uh, particularly good way for couples to learn about how they can uh, change their relationships around when they are um, struggling with ADHD and responses to ADHD. Okay, great. Yeah, definitely check out Melissa's website. It has some great resources. Um, and your books are great, too. So definitely take a look at her stuff. Um, so, yeah, today we're going to be talking about distractibility. You know, people have ADHD, it, it impacts their entire life. So we're focusing today on relationships and ADHD. So, Melissa, how does distractibility really impact a relationship? Well, uh, quite a lot and in a lot of different ways, actually. So, chronic distractibility is the number one symptom of adult ADHD. And so, it's uh, it's pretty much everywhere. And whether or not, you, it's one of the things that you're trying to manage uh, if you have ADHD, and it's certainly very disruptive. I think um, one of the things that often happens to couples um, is that uh, you have uh, the ADHD partner who is chronically distracted and who may or may not actually, as the relationship has started out, be aware that they have ADHD. Sometimes, uh, lots of times, folks don't figure that out for a while. Um, and their partner does not understand why they're not getting uh, more attention um, because uh, the um, hyper-focused courtship is one of, a period of great attention typically for couples and then and then that dies down and, and there's sort of this chronic distraction. So one of the big impacts actually of uh, distractibility um, in relationships is that the other partners end up feeling unloved or unattended to and, and um, that can lead to um, not only feeling bad and feel in, uh, in that way but also um, resentment and, and angry uh, responses. Mm. Yeah, that's really not fun when you're in a relationship, and that can really, you know, lead to a lot of other negative things, too. Well, it it does. I mean, you, when you think about what people are looking, you know, how you think about your relationship, um, the getting attention from your partner is sort of a given uh, mm-hmm. as you imagine what your relationship is going to look like. So when you don't get that attention, um, you tend to 
misunderstand that symptom of ADHD and think that that you're not um, not well loved or that there's something wrong. Um, I remember my husband has ADHD, and I remember um, when I first got into that stage, it was very confusing for me because I mm-hmm. um, I thought, gee, you know, did I do something different? Now we're married, and I'm no longer interesting because he doesn't have to chase me anymore. What's going on? <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, after I asked for more attention, and I still didn't get it. Uh, I started to feel resentful and angry about that, and of course, then I expressed that, and he was confused because for him, you know, he felt that he certainly loved me, and he didn't understand why I was angry and frustrated with him. Um, and, and I would say, you know, you don't really love me, or it doesn't feel like you love me. And he'd say, of course, I love you. And again, he was he was confused. There was a great misunderstanding. Um, you know, I was misinterpreting this symptom because at that point I didn't know it was a symptom. And most uh, most couples uh, who have ADHD in their relationship um, start out actually not knowing about the ADHD. So yeah. um, so it's tough. And it's got to be tough because in the beginning, the partner with the ADHD is very extremely focused, whereas other types of relationships, the change may not have been so drastic. So especially if the person on the other end, you know, the non-ADD partner isn't aware of ADHD at all, it's got to be extremely frustrating, I'd say, you know, for both people because of the drastic yeah. change. Yeah, it really is. So the hyper-focused courtship is chemistry, uh, brain chemistry. What happens when you're infatuated with somebody, and this happens to everybody, is that they get um, very high levels of dopamine in their brain. And this is sort of a biological thing that happens to attach people together. So it's evolutionary uh, in its nature. But um, then it wears off somewhere between 20 and 24 months, uh, and then it, it wears off. And the ADHD partner then goes back to their normal lower dopamine state, um, which mm-hmm. means they become much more distracted and inattentive. Uh, and it's a sort of a new person in the relationship, so it's it's very surprising and confusing, and you sort of just don't know what's going on. Um, so yeah, that's a it's it's a problem for sure. <laughs> that's not the only yeah. problem, of course, uh, with distractibility um, in the relationships, but that's one of the first ones that couples encounter. Yeah. It, what what's another um, challenge or problem related to distractibility? Well, so another one that uh, develops over time, I mean, these relationships are really interesting in terms of of how they develop. Um, Typically, what happens is that you'll have a, um, you know, two partners who are quite unlike each other in many ways, um, and including how their brains work. And uh, so opposites attract, and they're very interesting, and they complement each other's lives, and it's very exciting to be with somebody who's not like you, et cetera. Um, But uh, as the relationships um, go on in terms of years, uh, some things start to happen. Um, the chronic distractibility interferes um, often with ADHD partners being able to follow through on the commitments that they make. Um, they get distracted from, let's say, a chore or something that they want to do, and uh, and they forget to do it um, because they got distracted by something else. Um, and uh, and so, you know, at first the non-ADD partner sort of takes over and says, okay, that's fine, no problem, I can do that, that's easy for me. Um, but then as the relationship goes on and that continues and more and more things get handed over, um, that becomes problematic. Um, and distractibility is certainly not the only thing there. There are other um, symptomatic issues going on as well, but distraction is certainly one of them. Um, and the net result is that over time um, the partner starts to say, huh, you know, my my other partner is sort of consistently inconsistent. What do I do with that? So that's a, yeah, that and, ends yeah. up eroding trust. <clears throat> and that's what your marriage or an intimate relationship is really based on is trust. So that brings a lot of, you know, problems into the marriage when you don't have trust. Because on the surface, it's because maybe the person didn't take out the trash like they said they would. But, you know, that can be frustrating. A lot of people aren't really looking at that deep, you know, when they're they're just dealing with, okay, why has it, they, have, they haven't taken the trash out. I'm upset about the person not taking the trash out. So it's going to be extremely frustrating and challenging when people are not totally aware that this is being caused or contributed to by the ADHD. So, right. Yeah, it really and it's a so a huge time. proportion. And most of most adults who have ADHD still aren't aware that they have it. So the most common setup is that mm-hmm. when the relationship is starting, at least, 
Um, they're not aware of the ADHD. So this is very confusing. I mean, so so when you have the ADHD symptoms, they're chronic. And um, so they keep happening. So you'll talk with your ADHD partner and say, gee, um, you know, you forgot to do X, Y, Z. And the person will say, oh, gee, I'm so sorry. You're right. I did. I got distracted or whatever they say. And but, you know, if you have that conversation over and over and over again, after a while you start going, mm-hmm. well, why am I, why do I have to keep reminding you about this stuff? Why do you keep forgetting? You must not care about me <laughs> very much or about us or about doing this stuff. And, of course, the person with the ADHD um, is sort of saying, oh, no, you know, I'll try harder or whatever. And trying harder doesn't work as well mm-hmm. as trying differently, which means yep. using ADHD-friendly strategies. But, of course, if you don't know you have ADHD, you don't know to do that. <laughs> so it's yeah. one of these uh, problems. <laughs> so it, 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 a lot you know, of the listeners problem. here are, you know, aware that there's ADHD, that they have it, or one of their partners. But still, I think just becoming aware of ADHD and kind of new to the diagnosis of the term, people not, may not fully realize how it's impacting relationships. So you have the people that don't know at all and are identifying. And now, let's say they've been married for five, six, seven years. They've just identified. They have like a whole, they have those years worth of the behavior. So, you know, identify it as one thing. But it's good to know someone like you offers tips and strategies and there's resources out there to help improve the um, situations like this. Yeah, well, and it's interesting. So, um, a lot of people, even if they know about the ADHD, say, oh, well, you know, that's my issue and it doesn't really impact mm. my partner particularly, and that, yeah. that's not true. And furthermore, there are interactions between the partners that the, um, you know, you have the ADHD symptomatic behavior, whatever it is, and then you have some response to that behavior. Um, yeah. And what re- what that response is makes a huge difference in terms of how their partnership um, moves forward. I mean, to, to move back to what we were talking about before, feeling unloved, if you have that chronic distractibility and the response to that is confusion or anger, let's say, or frustration, that's a very different response um, that leads the, the relationship in a negative direction. If you know about the ADHD symptom of distractibility and you can say to yourself, oh, well, this isn't personal, and you can respond to it by saying, hey, I've noticed you're pretty distracted and I'm starting to feel uh, a little lonely. Let's go out for a date. Um, that moves the the relationship in a completely different direction. But you have to be aware Mm -hmm. of these things. And to your point, um, lots of times folks are just simply not aware of these. And so education really is key. This is actually one of the reasons why I started my seminar um, was and and have written my two books. um, And and people read these books and they write to me and they say, have you been sitting in our living room? How do you know all this stuff? And it's because these patterns are really predictable. Um, but you need to know about them um, in order to be able to interfere with them. Otherwise, they are the reason they're predictable is because it's very it's human nature. If your partner is continually not doing what he or she says they're going to do, it's human nature to say to yourself, "Huh, I guess they're not trustworthy." Yeah, yeah, and that's not it's, it. And the thing you can live a better life. I mean, that's why I think what's great is the services and the resources you offer and point out because sometimes people just get into living a certain way and that's the only way they know. So it, it's good to bring out awareness and say, okay, this doesn't have to be like this. You can change it and you can improve your life. Yeah, and, and it's interesting. I think what I see, um, a lot of people find me um, when their relationships are in really big trouble, um, and what I see is that they've been struggling for years. Both partners have mm-hmm. been struggling for yeah. years to try to figure out what's going on, and that the the right information that about it's not just the ADHD. That's that's uh, those symptomatic behaviors are important. But it's also about how the relationship works overall and what stra- specific strategies the couples are choosing. And with the right information, it is amazing how many couples um, can turn things around and and, um, and and how beneficial that information is. So it's it's very exciting, actually, to work in that area because, yeah, it's really great. <laughs> okay, so. is there any other area you'd like to talk about today when it comes to distraction with ADHD and relationships? Well, I mean, so it's a, it's a big factor in a lot of different ways, and uh, one of them, another one of them, is um, is distractibility in conversation. Um, mm. And you have a bunch of different ways that distractibility can impact conversations. One is the classic, uh, where you're talking to somebody and they get distracted and they lose their place in the conversation. You know, they're paying attention to the dog barking or something that's going on <laughs> outside the window or whatever. 
And then they come back to the conversation and they don't know what they've missed, um, mm. but they try to sort of fill it in, you know, because that's yep. what we do when we don't want to say, hey, hold on, I just, you know, I just got, I zoned out there. And um, and they fill it in incorrectly. And then at the end of the conversation, they'll say something or respond in a way that's not totally in line with what the conversation, how the conversation actually went. And their partner gets very frustrated with them, like, what, you're, yeah. not, you're not listening again? Or, or they are distracted and they don't, um, they aren't able to to remember because they weren't paying full attention. Or you know, so there are a lot of conversational um, impacts for distractibility, um, and there are different ways to get around them. I mean, one of them in that first example I gave is is just simply to have the two of you agree it's better to admit that you got distracted. Mm-hmm. And come yeah. back and say something like, hey, I just zoned out, and have the other people feel that that's positive that you said that. You know, it's an indication that you want to stay engaged in the conversation, and the ADHD temporarily got in the way, but now you're back, so, you know, fill me, fill me in. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so if that's a neutral interaction instead of something to be ashamed of, um, then it works very well. You can get right back into the conversation. The person can tell you what you missed, and... And off you go again, and you can be a full contributor, and, and you know, that gets around a, a problem. I mean, that's a good example of a pretty simple strategy, which once people understand this is this is a symptom and, and you know, there are things you can do to interfere with uh, the standard procedure, if you want to call it that, then it works really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so that's another area. I mean, there are others. There's distractibility during sex. There's all sorts of stuff. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, and, you know, it's got its fingerprints everywhere. It is, and I think it's good to know that it's not, like, when it comes to the conversation, it's not something personal that the person's zoning out because they're bored or they don't like you. It's the way the brain works. So if both partners can kind of understand that, that it, it's because of the brain wiring, it can be easier to, you know, like the strategy you gave, it's simple, but that can make a world of difference. And, yeah, it's... <laughs> conversations are tough. And if you're used to being yelled at and stuff like that, the person with the ADHD is automatically going to zone out. So it's good to, that people understand what's going on in the brain and that, it, that you can like change a couple little things and they can make a world of difference. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. Once you start to sort of correctly or differently interpret these, these things, um, it makes a huge difference. I mean, one of the other um, conversational issues that people run into pretty regularly that's very easy to, to not have a problem with is you'll often have a person who has impulsivity, who has ADHD, who will interrupt. And mm-hmm. what I found over the years talking with um, with couples about this is that part of the reason the interruptions are happening is not just impulse control issues. It's also because that person really genuinely wants to be involved in the conversation and something has come into their mind and they're really afraid they're going to forget it before yep. the conversation moves on. So there are a couple of different – I mean, once the partner understands that it's not an issue of being rude or that they don't value what you're saying, but it's because they're eager to be involved in the conversation, that puts a completely different light on it. And you, there are some different strategies you can use. If you're having a long, serious conversation, you can bring a notepad to and on, jot down what your idea is so you don't lose it. Or you can have a verbal cue where you say, hey, I've got something here. I really want to contribute just an idea I want to throw out. And you can take two seconds to throw the idea out so that the other person hears it and then come back to it later. Um, so you essentially are borrowing their memory, um, you know, and, and not interrupting them in any long-term way. I mean, there are different ways to handle it. But again, it becomes a positive interaction instead of a negative interaction. And there are millions of those kinds of things that couples can learn to do. Yeah. And I'm, I'm guessing, or I, I think I know, that you have a lot of these strategies in your books. You have some great things on your website. So, I mean, if someone's listening right now and they're saying, okay, this is me, this is my partner, I definitely recommend checking out at least Melissa's website and her books also. I do. I have a ton of resources. My, I am um, um, very serious about um, helping couples move through this. I mean, my husband and I had, I like to joke that we were completely average. We had all of the issues that all the people that mm-hmm. come to find me also share. Um, and uh, and so I'm really aware of how important it is to get this information. So there's a ton. I have a um, a treatment, online free treatment guide that talks about the latest in adult ADHD treatment. I, I have these seminars and books and audio books that you can get 
um, at my site. I write a blog post. There's a forum. I mean, there's just a ton of, of resources there for people to explore um, what's available. And um, and I do hope people will look it up. And if they're interested, I give the seminar um, three times a year typically. Um, so usually winter, spring, and then again in the fall. So um you know, they can send me a note if they want me to remind them closer to the time for that. And that's probably one of the best resources because it's interactive. People can ask me their own questions um, and hear the questions of others, which is really interesting because you realize yeah. that you're not struggling alone with this stuff. Hey, Melissa, we are actually towards the end of today's show. Do you have final thoughts that you'd like to leave people with today? And can you make sure you give out your website information once again? Okay, so I always like to make sure that couples understand that um, no matter how long they have been struggling or um, or what they're struggling with, it is a huge struggle if you're just getting into understanding ADHD and relationships. Um, but there really is uh, hope. I have seen so many couples turn things around from pretty disastrous situations just by getting this right kind of information. So definitely um, go to my website. Um, it's www.adhdmarriage.com. And, of course, contact me if you have um, questions. I'm always happy to answer them. Um, and um, I hope people will take the opportunity to, to learn how to be different in their relationship. It really makes a huge difference. Well, thank you so much, Melissa Orlov, and thank you everyone for listening to ADHD Support Talk Radio. And if you are listening to us on iTunes or Stitcher, be sure to stop by our website at ADHDSupportTalk.com. Thanks again.